Hey, I'm here at a uh, remote location today, actually my dad's house, to uh, kind of give you a little uh, tour of his 13-14 uh, uh, Boatster that he's building up. Uh, this car has actually a pretty interesting history, so I thought I'd go over a little bit about how he came about it and where this car came from. Uh, about 15 years ago or so, maybe a little bit longer ago than that, uh, he and I were at an auction down in Indiana. This is actually one of the more interesting auctions I've ever been to. Uh, the story was that this guy was, uh, had died at 99 years old, so a very old guy, and his career was delivering buses. Uh, so he would drive all over the country and deliver these buses, and uh, the company that he worked for would give him a stipend to uh, uh, you know, catch a train uh, back home. But he would take that, and instead he would buy a cheap used car and drive it home, and then park it in the woods. Um, he had been doing this, uh, the oldest car there was a the 1913, and the cars went all the way up into about the mid 70s, and there were hundreds of cars. Um, and, and just about everything that you can imagine, there were, uh, there were a, a lot of Fords, uh, there were Austins and Bantams, there was, uh, I think, a 1914 Flanders or something, something odd. A lot of Model Ts, a lot of Model As, a lot of cars from the 30s. In fact, uh, there was a uh, there was a 33 Ford Roadster there that was in a uh, in a collapsed barn. Uh, I had actually even missed it uh, uh, going through uh, the woods, uh, the sort of a hilly woods where these things were. Anyway, the way that this auction worked was uh, they had spray painted numbers on all the cars. And then uh, everybody had a list, and uh, the auction took place across the road under this big tent, and they'd go down and uh, do the lot numbers one at a time with a little short description next to each one of those. So uh, first, uh, before the auction, everybody walked around and uh, looked at the lot numbers, and uh, there, were, uh, there were a lot of things. There were a lot of car parts. There were buses that were just full of car parts, uh, old buses too. It was very interesting. Um, anyway, uh, because this was sort of a hilly, overgrown area with a lot of dead cars and car parts, there were some areas that were, uh, that were roped off with caution tape. They said, no, no, you can't, you can't even go back there to look. It's just, it's just too dangerous. Um, so I had, I had walked around and made this sort of a little list of, uh, some of the things that I was interested in buying. And, um, uh, I went up to, uh, view the auction and, uh, dad was back still looking. Uh, so the auction gets underway, and I'm uh, kind of watching the lots go down, and uh, Dad comes up behind me, and he says, hey, lot number blah, 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 bid on that. Uh, and I said, well, that's the lot right now. Uh, so I threw up a bid, uh, and it was just starting. It was like $100 or something to start. And I said, what, what am I bidding on? And I looked at the lot number, and it said two Model Ts, uh, which isn't really unusual because there were a lot of Model Ts. Uh, and I said, well, okay, well, what am I bidding on? He says, well, there's two Model Ts, but they're back like where nobody can see them because you have to get behind the caution tape to go in and see them. I shouldn't even put them back there. Uh, but uh, one of them has a brass radiator. And as I'm talking back and forth to him, I'm like throwing up bids because I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it is that I'm even doing. Uh, and I said, well, you know, I bid. Hey, how much, how much, how, much, how high am I going on these things? And uh, he, he says, at the time, it was like 600 bucks. He says, oh, I don't know, uh, stop, stop there, stop there. I, I don't even know what we're bidding on. Uh, I could tell he was being a little timid, even though I didn't really know what was, what was being bid on. Uh, so I threw up a couple more bids on it. We ended up getting these things for 800 bucks, two Model Ts. Um, which, uh, yeah, at the time, I wasn't really cash rich, and I figured two Model Ts is going to fill up my trailer anyway, and we're, we're down in Indiana somewhere. Uh, so I, I left the auction to go and look and see where well what it was that we even bought and it took us a while because he had lost track of where these were and we're wandering around the woods and we finally find these things uh and get back there to where they're at and ends up being being a couple there's a there's a brass radiator sticking out under this massive pile of parts and rims and steering columns and all kinds of rear ends uh, all kinds of stuff um and uh there was a wagon there too uh Anyway, I went back and uh, I bid on a couple of other things, odds and ends. Uh, I didn't really get anything, but that's that. That's what we brought, bought there. Uh, so 
I pulled the trailer up and start, we started unloading this stuff and uh, taking loads down the hill uh, to where the trailer was. Uh, and uh, the, it took us quite a while. We actually, we ended up uh, getting a hotel and coming back the next day uh, just because it took so long to, to get all of this stuff off of the cars. And then the rear wheels were frozen up. So we had to take the, uh, take the rear wheels off ended up taking the uh, uh, taking the keyways out of the rear axles and then putting the putting the uh, wheels back on so that the wheels just free wheel regardless of what the rear end is doing. Um, I got the uh, I got the one uh, chassis down. Uh, then this one we uh, uh, we got it down and it's one of the last things and uh, we start to push it down. It's a fairly steep long hill, uh, so he pushes it and then I jump on. And then I just start yelling at people to get out of the way because this thing is just coasting down the, road, down the hill and uh, I don't want to run over anybody. Uh, so I, we, we goes down the hill, goes around and it like pulls, up, pulls to a stop right at the back of our trailer, which is perfect. Anyway, that's, the, uh, that's sort of the story of where this car came from. Uh, this car was purchased uh, cheaply by this bus delivery guy, driven back from wherever and then just parked in the field for years and years and years along with literally hundreds of other cars. Uh, so uh, when we got it, it, this was just a chassis, no body, it still really doesn't have a body on it. And he's uh, started to restore the, uh, the parts that came with it and, and get a few other parts. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of tour of, uh, of what's going on. Here's a shot of what these cars look like when we actually found them. As you can see, it's hard to tell there's even cars underneath that big pile of stuff. Uh, let me uh, zoom in with uh, with another picture so you can kind of kind of see uh, what we saw when we found these things. Here you can see zoomed in from another photo just what was sticking out from underneath this pile of parts and other debris that had been piled up over it over the course of many many years. And uh, this is really all that we could see that we were bidding on. So after two days of loading, this is what we ended up with: two Model Ts plus a ton of parts on the trailer. Just out of frame is my truck also full of stuff so this is sort of the before now i'm going to kind of walk around the car as it currently is and uh, and give you some of the random facts and features of it all right this is actually a a very late 13. um uh, he's building it up using a 1914 parts which would actually be correct for late 13. uh what ford found was in the 1913 model year the, the touring car bodies that year were, were very weak and prone to crack uh, right in the middle. Uh, so the 1913 model year was kind of foreshortened. So by late 13, uh, starting with the touring car and uh, then working through the other models, uh, the, the, the 1914 models were introduced early. So a late 13, when you look at it, is actually going to look a lot like a 1914. And he's building this all up uh, 1913 correct. Uh, except for uh, except for the fenders, these are 1915 fenders. He's um, you know retired and uh, just working on uh, whatever parts he can find. And uh, so far, uh, he's been able to uh, locate some uh, uh, 15 fenders. Uh, this one is uh, this one is a 15. I see the uh, three rivets here, and uh, this one over here. Is a, is a 15 style, but it's a it's a later replacement fender. It's got uh, it's got two rivets, which actually never appeared on a production car. However, if you purchased a replacement fender from Ford in uh, in the years afterwards to fit your uh, fit your 1314, they came out with this uh, with this two rivet style. So it's a uh, it's a correct replacement, but uh, but never actually appeared in uh, in production. Um, Anyway, uh, uh, he's been uh, gathering parts, so we have the uh, correct Kingston four-ball carburetor. Um, my, uh, my experience with the Kingston, actually, I've, uh, I've adjusted some five balls, and they're, uh, they're, they're a little touchy. Uh, some people really don't like them. I can kind of understand that. In my experience, you can get them to, uh, to run well, but as opposed to a later carburetor, say like an NH, it has a, a very narrow band where it will run properly. Where, you know, an NH, you just sort of get it in the neighborhood and off you go. This is like, you know, you got to balance it on the head of a needle. 
Over here we have some of the uh, the brass for the car. Uh, this is a side light to John Brown 110, which would be correct for 1913 and 1914. This is what's referred to as the brass and black era of Model Ts because uh, earlier Model Ts, there's going to be brass headlights and brass side lights all polished up really nice. Starting in 1913, that brass look started to become a little passe. It had been around a while, and other cars were starting to move away from the dripping in brass kind of look. So Ford has uh, this brass headlight, brass side light. Actually, you can see the same thing on the horn. The body is painted black with, uh, with brass polished trim. So we're starting to move away from the brass era. Uh, the night this is 1913 and 1914 both look like this. In uh, the following year, 1915, they moved actually to fully electric uh, headlights, uh, and those were also painted black. And then the headlight rims were brass. Then uh, after that, then we went to the fully black front, painted everything painted black look. But this is sort of a transition uh, year. We have uh, we have. Uh, a black and brass look to it. Over here behind the firewall, we've got uh, his uh, accessory uh, speedometer. Uh, we've got uh, lettered pedals uh, marked for clutch, reverse, and brake. Uh, Ford didn't really put the uh, put the letters on there for for very long. Uh, that was uh, that was just uh, quickly replaced with uh, ribbed. Uh, uh, pedals and then uh, just plain pedals after that. But uh, for uh, for this year, it would be correct to have these lettered pedals. A little hard to find good ones because they get worn, um, uh, particularly the clutch plate gets worn. Uh, coil box, we have uh, four coils in there, one coil for uh, each cylinder. Here it is without the lid. Uh, like I said, one coil for each cylinder. These are early ones with, uh, with uh, brass tops on them. Uh, the uh, the later ones are the ones that you normally find uh, don't have them. Over here we've got a uh, calcium carbide uh, generator uh, that produces acetylene gas. Uh, I had uh, found that in an auction form, had to give five dollars for it. Anyway, uh, the way that that works is there's a there's a calcium uh, carbide material in there that, when exposed to water, produces acetylene gas, and then that runs uh, through a hose up to the headlights and uh, then you uh, then you light the gas at the little burner up at the headlights. If you've ever seen old movies uh, from uh, maybe Victorian houses where that had like the little gas light fixtures or uh, out uh, on in the city street lights where they had uh, gas lit uh, street lights, same concept, uh, calcium carbide exposed to water produces acetylene gas and they run it to ho run it from hoses uh, and uh, pipes out to various uh, houses. Uh, if you're uh, if you're not in the city, uh, you could have that with a home calcium carbide generator, uh, or you know, just use kerosene lamps. Uh, anyway, that uh, that sort of technology uh, continues uh, all the way up uh, here into 1913-14, uh, um, and uh, it wouldn't be till much later that we uh, uh, got rid of that and fully converted over to electric. another interesting little tidbit on the front axle. Uh, there's actually a mark here that says DB. Uh, what that stands for is Dodge Brothers. At the time, uh, Dodge was not building a car of their own. The brothers were actually parts suppliers to Ford. It wasn't until uh, several years later that they had uh, maybe a little falling out with Ford and started to produce their own vehicle. Uh, but uh, but on these early ones, uh, the, uh, the front axle, uh, uh, a lot of them have this DB mark. And if you're uh, scrounging around uh, Model T front axles, if you find one that has that, uh, the Model T guys are, uh, actually consider those pretty valuable and uh, uh, desirable. So we've got the radiator and windshield over there. Uh, Dad is trying to build up a Roadster. Uh, so far, he can't find a good 1314 Roadster body, uh, but uh, we're starting to accumulate parts. He's also looking for rear fenders. Uh, uh, has the uh, has the correct turtle deck, uh, but that's the state where the car is in right now. Just a little bit more work and maybe we'll see this thing driving down the road even without the body on it. But uh, we're almost there. Well, that's just sort of a brief tour, sort of hitting a couple of the highlights of the car uh, just as a little walk around. Uh, maybe we'll give you an update uh, uh, after a while if, uh, if we actually get this thing uh, driving down the road or make some 
uh, tremendous progress on it. If anyone is watching, if you have any questions on it, uh, feel free to leave a comment or uh, ask something down in the comments. Uh, that's about it. We'll talk to you later. Bye.